The following video is for educational purposes only. Please consider which methods best fit your operation and business. Steel pipelines are an important means of transportation for petroleum products. It's critical they be maintained in order to protect people and the environment from risk inherent in transporting petroleum products. At times, that means pipe sections must be removed or replaced. While there are a variety of energy isolation techniques that can be used, this video will focus on only one type, mud plugs. Mud plugs are formed using API grade powdered bentonite mixed with potable water. By weight, a ratio of 50% bentonite to 50% water produces mud that demonstrates good processing characteristics. These include strength, formability, and adhesion, all of which are needed to develop a vapor barrier. A ratio of 60% water to 40% bentonite also produces good processing characteristics. There is a simple formula to determine how much mud is required to create a vapor barrier. The diameter of the pipe in inches cubed, then divided by 16. Thus, a 10-inch pipe requires about 62 pounds of mud. This amount should be enough mud to create a plug equal to one and a half times the pipe diameter. Knowing that water weighs 8.33 pounds per gallon, simple multiplication will determine how many gallons will be required to yield the 62 pounds of mud necessary to plug the 10-inch pipe in our example. Variations of up to 10% of the required amount are acceptable, but remember, a drier mixture will be more difficult to process. Test results indicate adding sand or antifreeze to the mud mix should not be done because these two substances could negatively impact the ability of the mud to form a vapor barrier. The most readily available bentonite is referred to as premium gel. The premium gel bentonite should be weighed since the powder density may vary by 20% and may affect the water to bentonite ratio. For best processing and mixing results when creating the mud mixture, the bentonite powder should be added to the water and mixed together, not adding the water to the bentonite powder. The amount of mud needed will influence the size of the container used to mix the mud. A well-processed mud mixture will look like this. Prior to use, the mud mixture may be formed into balls and stored in sealed containers to prevent evaporation. For handling purposes and to work out fissures and air spaces, the mud balls should be around 3 inches in diameter, approximately the size of a baseball. If the mud balls are not used immediately, store them in containers that are either sealed or covered to slow evaporation of the water within the mud. The mud balls should be stored at near room temperature until they are ready to be used. Mud balls that are dried out, cold, or frozen should not be used as they may lose their ability to form a vapor barrier. Individual companies must determine the appropriate personal protective equipment for their employees, such as gloves, safety glasses, respiratory protection, or fire retardant clothing that must be used during the installation of mud plugs. For safety, use a multi-gas monitor to check the atmosphere inside the pipe and surrounding area for flammable and other harmful vapors. To assure the pipe is clean and dry, remove rust, loose debris, residual hydrocarbons, or other deposits from the interior surface. Measure and mark the beginning and end point of the mud plug. The length of the plug should be one and a half times the width of the pipe diameter. This measurement should take into consideration how far the end point of the mud plug should be relative to the opening of the pipe where activities such as torch cutting and welding will take place. A small mud ball can be used as a marker at both locations. To begin, create a thin layer of mud on the inner surface of the pipe by rubbing a mud ball over it. This will ensure a better adhesion of the mud ball to the inner surface of the pipe. One technique used to create a mud plug is to pack mud balls in a series of rings or discs inside the pipe. The first ring or disc is called the base disc and is formed at the farthest point in the pipe. Subsequent rings or discs should be molded together to form a solid plug. The base disc is started by packing mud balls around the inside perimeter of the pipe. Each additional mud ball that is added should be molded into the previously placed mud to ensure no gaps exist that could compromise the vapor barrier. 
the last open gap should be filled in as the perimeter rings are completed to form a solid ring or disc. The base is critical for proper sealing since it is exposed to the process side of the pipe. At this point, use your hands to press the mud balls together and smooth the base into an even surface. Make sure the gaps are completely sealed and that the edges of the mud balls blend together. Continue the process building each ring by using the same technique as the building of the base disc, ensuring all subsequent rings or discs are molded together until the desired length of the plug is reached. Extreme care should be taken not to deviate from this technique throughout mud plug construction as the use of excessive pressure caused by throwing mud balls could compromise the integrity of the mud plug. The completed mud plug will look like this, sealed to the inner surface of the pipe with no cracks or gaps. After several hours, the surface of the plug may show some cracking and shrinking, but the interior of the plug should remain intact. Evaporation of moisture from the mud can reduce its effectiveness, and elevated temperatures can make the problem worse. To isolate the repair area, upstream and downstream valves should be closed, locked and tagged out at a minimum. Once the repair area has been isolated, the pipe is drained, the damaged section of pipe is removed, and the vents are installed upstream and downstream. The mud plugs are then built on the upstream and downstream sides of the open pipe, making sure that there is sufficient space from the end of the plugs to the end of the pipe so that the work can be performed. The vents should be monitored throughout the process to ensure hazardous vapors are vented away from the work area and that pressure does not build up and displace the mud plugs. Once the mud plugs have created a proper vapor barrier, necessary work can be done safely to replace the section of damaged pipe. Upon completion of the repair, vents are closed, valves are open, pipeline is returned to service, and the mud plugs are displaced by the product. If the mud plug was properly constructed, elevated and below freezing ambient temperatures, as well as heating from torch cutting and welding, will not adversely affect the mud plug's ability to serve its purpose as a vapor barrier. The following are some of the valuable points that need to be emphasized in mixing and constructing mud plugs. API grade powdered bentonite and potable water should be used to create the mud mixture. Weigh the bentonite in water to ensure the mud has good processing characteristics. For best processing characteristics, add the bentonite powder to the water. Form the mud into balls approximately three inches in diameter. Check the atmosphere inside the pipe and surrounding area for flammable and other harmful vapors with a multi-gas monitor prior to cleaning the inside of the pipe. Make sure the inside of the pipe is clean and dry prior to installing the mud plug. Mark the beginning and the end point in the mud plug to establish the desired length. Ensure each series of rings or discs are constructed uniformly and all subsequent rings or discs are molded together to create a solid mud plug. Ensure vents are installed to avoid pressure buildup that could cause the mud plug to be ejected if the pipe should become pressurized. For additional information on energy isolation options, including mud plugs, please see the comprehensive energy isolation guidance document that is available on this same web page hosted by Technical Toolboxes. This video showed one method for safe, effective energy isolation. The best energy isolation method for each situation depends on many factors, including but not limited to worksite conditions, specific energy isolation needs, pipe and equipment design, and available resources and tools. Regardless of the energy isolation method chosen, be sure to follow all safety procedures and policies when implementing energy isolation. Procedures illustrated in this video were based on mud plug testing results for 6-inch, 10-inch, and 16-inch diameter pipe. This video does not provide guidance on the duration mud can be stored in containers prior to use or on the duration the mud plug will serve as an effective vapor barrier. During testing, mud ball rehydration was not successful. Mud plug testing results indicated sand and antifreeze should not be used in mixing of mud. This project was undertaken in connection with the settlement of an enforcement action taken by the Pipeline and Hazardous Materials Safety Administration, U.S. Department of Transportation, for alleged violations of the Federal Pipeline Safety Laws, 49 U.S.C. Section 60101.